Hi guys, so welcome back to us, Told by Red. Now, my first video of the year, I told you guys that I was gonna be doing some DIY projects. I am currently in the process of redoing our master bedroom, so I figured why not show you guys my DIY projects. doing this chair now I got this chair at Goodwill for about $12 this is clearly a dining room chair but I figured that it will be kind of a good space filler in my room because I have like a section that has like a really like empty space that kind of needs something to go there so I am going to completely redo this chair I have gone to the home not home goods i've gone to like home depot lowe's walmart the fabric store so this chair as you see right now is not going to look like this when i'm done so if you want to see how i'm going to transform this chair make sure that you guys keep on watching but before you do make sure you are subscribed to the channel hit the notification bell and also give this video a thumbs up so yeah keep on watching to see me reposter and flip this thrift store find okay guys so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the cushion off the chair i don't show it because it was out of frame but my chair had three little screws at the bottom of it i took them off and then i just put them in a sandwich bag so that i wouldn't lose them next you're going to see me i'm taking off the dust cloth which is the black part on that covers up the chair that's going to cover up your spring it's going to cover up your cushion that's underneath you're going to want to take this off you want to take this off as neatly as possible because you don't want to rip it if yours is in good condition mine was in good condition so there was no need for me to get any extra from the fabric store i was just very delicate when i took it off you're going to need a staple remover some pliers and a flathead screwdriver will get it off for you as well so i'm just going through and really trying to lift up all of those screws sorry not screws staples Depending on your chair, you can have a lot. I swear this cushion had like 300 staples in them. But once you get the hang of it, you're really going to be able to just kind of get a flow going and you'll be able to just pry them off. But just keep going around the entire thing until you remove all of the staples from all of the cushion and the cushion should just come right off. Okay, now that we've got our cushion all taken apart, we're going to go ahead and start stripping down the chair. I'm using Citrus Strip. I got this at Walmart, but they also sell this at Home Depot, Lowe's, and anything like that. You're just going to want to paint this, and I'm using just a chip brush. Chip brushes are like a dollar. You can get them at any hardware store or Walmart, and you just want to cover the chair with the Citrus Strip. And what the Citrus Strip is going to do is it go it's going to remove the layers of varnish and remove the stain from the wood. So you're going to put that on there, and and then I'm going to just let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes and then I'm going to come back and strip everything off once it's ready to go. While we've got our citrus strip sitting on our chair, we're going to start working on the cushion. Now that I've got the entire thing taken apart, you can clearly see I've separated the dust pad and this is what the chair looks like without the fabric on there. I'm going to take the new fabric that I bought from the store. I got this from Joann's and I actually, this is actual upholstery fabric, which is a little bit more expensive than regular fabric, but it's really all in your preference of what you want. So you want to use the old cushion as a pattern for your new fabric. And basically what that means is you're going to use the old fabric just to kind of cut out how big your fabric actually needs to be so that's what you see me doing here I'm just laying it on there and just cutting around it so that it's basically going to be the same size I cut it just a little bit bigger just so I had a little bit more room just in case I made a mistake and I'm doing the same exact thing with the batting as well 
Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start stapling our batting onto the chair. So I'm gonna lay the cushion on top of the batting and I'm gonna staple the front portion and I'm gonna staple the back portion. This is gonna help just to keep everything as smooth as possible and make sure that the batting doesn't move when we're putting our fabric on. So now I'm just cutting little slits where the legs of the chair actually belong. So that way when we put our cushion back onto our chair, it will fit properly and it will be nice and snug against the leg how it was when we originally took it off. So you're just gonna wanna do that and then continue to staple all around the chair. You can cut the batting. This does not have to be super pretty because it is gonna be covered by our fabric. So I just cut it to make everything fold and fit the way that I need it to and just bend it so it's nice smooth edges. So underneath our fabric, everything lays perfectly smooth. Once you've got everything on there and stapled nice and tight, you can go ahead and cut away any of the excess batting. Now that we've got our batting all nice and tight and done, we're gonna move on to putting our actual fabric on the chair. So I'm gonna put the fabric on top of the cushion so that way I can see what it's going to look like. Now this fabric actually has a pattern on it, so you wanna make sure that your pattern is directly in the center of the chair. If you have something like mine that has like diamond shapes, you wanna make sure it's even across the entire chair. If you have something that has like stripes or anything like that, you wanna also make sure your stripes are lined up in the center of the chair. So that's what I'm doing here just to make sure that everything is lined up before I go ahead and flip it over and start stapling. Now that I figure out how I want my fabric to lay, I'm gonna do that same process of stapling the front and stapling the back portion of the chair, and then I'm gonna start stapling all around. You wanna make sure that you're pulling your fabric nice and tight because this portion actually does matter. So you just wanna make sure everything is nice and tight, and if you have to keep flipping it over to make sure it's perfectly smooth on the top, go ahead and do that. You really just wanna take your time with this portion and make sure you are spending time on those corners to make sure everything is folded nice and neat and there's no crazy creases going on. Now that we've got our fabric all perfectly done, we're gonna take that same dust protector that was originally on the chair, we're gonna take that and we're gonna place it back on. This is just gonna catch any excess dust or anything like that. It's just gonna keep it all protected in the chair so it doesn't get on our floor and it doesn't get on our actual chair. So just put that right over top and just staple that into place. And then you have a perfectly done cushion. Now that our citrus stripper has sat on the chair for about 45 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a plastic putty knife and I'm gonna start removing the actual stain from the chair. Now, if your stain has not come completely off and you still have a little bit of varnish left, feel free to go ahead and put a second layer on and then repeat the process again. Once you've gotten all your stuff off the chair, you want to take some paint thinner and you want to use this to clean up all of the excess varnish and any remaining residue from the paint stripper off of your chair. I'm just using this on a cheap little rag that I got from Walmart and I'm just scrubbing this chair down. This did take a little bit of elbow grease but you really wanna make sure that you get all of that citrus stripper off, you get all of that excess varnish, gook and gunk off of your chair, so that way you have a perfectly smooth, clean surface. And this is what your chair is gonna look like when it's all nice and clean. Now I'm just gonna take 180 grit sandpaper and just roughly sand the chair. And you really just wanna do this really light because you just want a kind of like a rough surface for your paint to go ahead and adhere to. So just do this all over the chair, no need to put your back into it. Really just let the sandpaper just do its job and it'll be perfect. And then it's just getting your chair primed and ready so that we can go ahead and start with painting.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and start to put the paint on the chair. I am using the Verathane Poly and Stain all in one in classic gray. I'm using just a short angle purdy brush to go ahead and put those on. Make sure you're going with the grain of the wood because you don't wanna have any crazy odd strokes. Just make sure you're taking long strokes going with the grain of the wood all over your chair. I did let my coats dry for about two to three hours in between. The can says that you can wait about an hour, but I just did two to three just to be safe. You're gonna wanna take a very fine grit sandpaper and just lightly sand your chair in between layers of paint. So that way the second layer has something also to adhere to kind of the rough surface that we originally started with when we first standed our chair. Once you do that, it's pretty much just letting your chair dry. If you feel like you need another coat, you can do that as well. I personally wasn't going for a super neat look. I kind of did want to see some of the old wood coming through under the underneath. I wanted kind of a weathered look. So I wasn't 100% like making sure that every single spot was fully covered. But that is just personal preference and it's up to whatever design choice you are going for. Once you're finished with everything and everything is completely dry, go ahead and put your cushion back on your chair. Now, once you're finished, this is the before of the chair, and then this is the after of the chair. I hope you guys really like this video. I'll have more DIYs coming for you guys really soon. Thanks for watching.